Hey friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. Tonight, I'm sharing some recipes with you. They could not be more different from one another in the kinds of food they are, but let me tell you, they are beautiful and they are delicious. We have not been this blown away with new recipes in a long time. And if you've been here long, you know they're gonna be quick, easy, and budget friendly. So let's get started. I am so excited about this recipe. This was inspired by something they serve at Biltmore. It's a pecan crusted chicken, but I wanted to get these potatoes on to mash up for a side. Now, before we get our chicken seasoned up, I am gonna take a half a cup of melted butter and a fourth a cup of Dijon mustard. And I'm just gonna get this stirred together really well. I've got three good sized chicken breasts and I'm gonna season them up on each side with salt and pepper. And I am not gonna fry or cook this chicken on top of the stove. It's gonna be baked in the oven, but I just wanted to do it in my cast iron instead of a baking dish. Now we're gonna take that butter and mustard mixture and pour that over top of the chicken breast. Want to make sure and get them all thoroughly coated. And this is actually enough mixture to do four chicken breasts. Now I am going to take just some pecan pieces. I'm going to leave mine kind of big. You can crush them up or just chunk them as small as you want. Now that I've got them pretty well covered, I am going to take my hand and just press the pecans down into that butter and mustard. This recipe did call for some rosemary, which I did not have, so I'm going to sprinkle a little Italian seasoning over the top of it, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sprinkle of this chopped basil that I've been using out of the fridge. Now I'm going to put this in a 375 degree oven for about 35 minutes. We'll check the internal temperature of our chicken and make sure it's 165 degrees. The thermometer says the chicken is done, so I'm just going to set it off onto a separate plate here. And I'm just gonna sit this in the microwave. I'm not turning the microwave on or anything. I'm just gonna sit it in there and let it um, hopefully not lose too much heat. I left my skillet with the drippings here and I've got it heating back up. While that's happening, I'm gonna start mashing these potatoes. I like to use an old hand masher and I wanna get these done kinda quick. I always mash them a little bit before I add my milk. Fair amount of salt, decent amount of black pepper, a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna throw in a big spoonful of sour cream. I've used mayonnaise, I've used cream cheese. Sometimes I don't use nothing extra. But I do like that little bit of zip. These are those little golden potatoes. You don't have to peel them, which is awesome because I don't peel them anyway half the time. I also like my potatoes kind of lumpy. I guess that's why I like a hand masher. Let me just grab a little taste here. Those are great. Now let's make some sauce. Okie doke, got my little butter drippings, my chicken drippings, a few of them pecans that was um, fell off of them. Got that heated up. I told you that this recipe had a Dijon sauce that went with it, but you know, we had the pecans, and I thought, let's make us a peach sauce. So this must be my ode, my shout out to all my Georgia friends. We're having Georgia pecans and some Georgia peach sauce chicken. And that was quite a sacrifice for me because that's my favorite jam. Okay, I'm gonna turn my skillet up to about medium now. 
let's get that jam stirred in. I think for a little added richness, I'm just gonna sprinkle in some brown sugar. And you guys, if you've been here, you know how I'm feeling about some balsamic vinegar this summer. As bad as I hate soy, I love balsamic vinegar. We're just going to get all this stirred together and we are just going to let it reduce. Friends, right here is where I almost made pecan brittle. Turns out I might have made an ice cream topping. This was very, very sweet, but gosh, it was good. It just took a little bit on top of that chicken and it made it amazing. Okay, Dad, this is a pecan, this is pecan crusted chicken. You didn't want any salad? No, thank you. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of, well, there's not a lot of stuff in it, but it, is, it feels like there's a lot of stuff in it. Feels like it was really fancy, but it wasn't. My gosh, that is good. <laughs> I'm so glad you like it. Like, that is so impressive looking, but... Like, what do you taste in there, in that sauce? Tell me what you think about the sauce. Did I make an ice cream topping? <laughs> it's pretty sweet, it's isn't sweet, it? It's sweet, but it, it pairs good with the chicken. It does. You really taste that peach in there, can't you? Yeah, now that you mention it, I can. Yeah, it was mostly peach jam. But that chicken, you taste the, like, oh, the Dijon good. mustard and stuff in there? It's like you kind of coat it with Dijon mustard and butter. Good too. Well, they're them little ones. They're good, ain't they? Mm -hmm. All right, you like it all? Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm glad you like it. His ain't the show plate tonight. Mine was. No salad for you, is there? Nah. Nah, that's not your deal. <laughs> Friends, this is so delicious. You have to make it. It gives me some fall vibes. When cool weather comes around, I am going to take me some Pepperidge Farm cornbread stuffing and kind of mix that in with these pecans and put that on the top of it. Then do some sweet potatoes on the side. Oh my goodness, it's going to be good. With doing all that, I may not do, you know, a fruity sauce. I may do the Dijon sauce since I'm going to have the other things with it. But this was so impressive. It looks like I spent so much time on this. Perfectly tender and juicy. The sauce, again, it was so, so good. And, of course, the potatoes and salad hit the spot. If you've had a stressful week, just sit back here and enjoy this biscuit making footage. I love this Southern Biscuit Company Formula L Biscuit Mix. It's all I ever make biscuits out of anymore. And there's something so relaxing about making biscuits or watching somebody make biscuits. I love it. I just pat my dough out. I don't use a rolling pin or anything. And I love this little cutter made out of a can that my daddy made me. Just go straight up and down with it. Don't twist it. That way your biscuits can rise up nice and tall. Nothing any more beautiful than a big cast iron skillet of buttery biscuits. Now let me show you how I like to top them. Thank you Jam and Jams for sponsoring today's video. They are a family owned and local business to me and I am so proud to work with them every season. I first fell in love with their jams years ago when I found them at some local vendor market and craft fairs. I didn't even know she had an online store. I can't wait every season to see the new creations and I love all my old favorites there too. Let me share my summer favorites with you. I am excited to try this, the strawberry lemonade. I have never had this jam before. Look how pretty this is. I say this every single time I share jam and jams. You can read every ingredient on here, and that is exactly what they taste like. It tastes just like fresh fruit, just put in a jar. Mmm, <laughs> that one's good. I could definitely see this going on a peanut butter and strawberry lemonade sandwich in the air fryer. This one right here, friends, just the regular peach. <laughs> I say this every time too. This is my ultimate favorite. It doesn't get any more summer than a pure peach jam. 
You can't beat this. The only thing that might come close is in the fall when you get spiced peach. I love it. Their jams are gluten-free, 100% dairy-free, vegan, low sugar, never have any artificial flavors or preservatives added. For a limited time, we have the Christmas jam available for Christmas in July. They also have a wide variety of savory jams. They're perfect for marinating meats and cooking with. There are so many choices, and if you can't decide, they offer the four-pack mini bundles where you can try a little bit of everything. Of course, she's put a great offer together for us. Head over to jamminjamstn.com. Use code SUMMER and you'll get 20% off a $35 order. I'll have everything linked down in the description box for you. It's a great time to start that early Christmas shopping and stocking up on your summer favorites too. Do you eat those Detroit Motor City frozen pizzas? We love those things. But something I just recently found out is that Detroit Motor City Pizza, it's like a whole thing. It's not just a new frozen pizza brand. This guy in Detroit started making these pizzas in a whole different way and they were square. And that is where the Detroit Motor City Pizza came in. It's a whole style. And it's like you make your pizza opposite of how we're used to making pizzas. But tonight, we are gonna make our own homemade Detroit Motor City Pizza. It just takes about 20 minutes. We're starting with this little bag of frozen bread dough and a big old cast iron skillet. What's not to love? I just put a little bit of flour down here on a cutting board and this dough was one pound. I ordered this from Kroger's. I'm not sure where it's at if you go in the store to get it but I'll look it up on my app and put it up on the screen for you. But lots of places carry this. I think this was $3.49 at Kroger's. Aldi's, at one time, you could get this for 99 cents there, I think. But what we're doing is we're just gonna like flatten it out here, kind of try to stretch it. And we want it to be about 12 inches. Meanwhile, I'm going to put about a tablespoon of oil in my cast iron. I'm going to cut this on high and I'm going to brush this oil all around in here. I'm even going to go up onto the sides. And when I said a big old cast iron skillet, what I mean is 12 inch cast iron skillet. <laughs> 12 inch is what I call my big old one. And I guess my regular size one, it must be about 10 inches. All right, I'm gonna let that heat up nice and hot. Now I'm gonna take my pizza dough and press it down into this skillet on top of this oil. I did all the flipping and throwing it up in the air off camera. I didn't think you'd wanna see that. <laughs> We're gonna take a fork and we are gonna pierce this all the way through and we are just gonna cook this about three or four minutes here on high on top of the stove until this crust sort of begins to puff up a little bit. Now I use this pre-bought dough. You could definitely make your own. I also love this little crust right here and this makes a really good thin pizza. These are six and a half ounce packages. It'd probably take two of these to fill up this. It's come to my attention I said pre-bought dough. I didn't pre-buy it, I did order it on pickup, but it's pre-made dough. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. <laughs> Mine's been on here about two minutes and I'm just gonna take it off the heat. Last thing I wanna do is burn it. Let me give you a little look at the bottom. Oops. See, it's not all the way done, but it's got a nice little start on it there. Let's start by just putting a little bit of Italian seasoning on that crust. Now, here comes the crazy part. You are just gonna start putting all your toppings down right on top of this crust. No sauce, no cheese, no nothing yet. And you can use whatever toppings you like. We're keeping it simple. We're just doing a pepperoni. And would this not be perfect if you had a big old square cast iron skillet like my daddy has to make cornbread in. I thought about asking him if I could use it for this, but I would just die if I left a pizza taste in his cornbread pan because that is all he uses it for. If you've seen him make cornbread here before, you know that. 
I'll leave the video of Daddy making his cornbread in the description box for you too. Now you come across your toppings with two cups of cheese. I'm used to using mozzarella. The writer of this recipe said she used like three-fourths a cup of Munster and a fourth of mozzarella and that was delicious. But you know, I couldn't find any just block or shredded Munster cheese. She also said, don't be skimpy. Go from corner to corner. Don't leave a bit of this dough untouched by the cheese. Now I'm gonna give it another little sprinkle of Italian seasoning. Since we're going crazy, I'm gonna throw just a few more pepperonis right over the top. Then you take about half a cup of your favorite pizza sauce and drizzle it across the top. The article I read said the little guy in Detroit did like three stripes. You can use more if you want to, but I kind of like that about those frozen Detroit Motor City pizzas is they're just not swimming in sauce. We're gonna put this in a 500 degree oven and we are putting this big bad boy on the very bottom rack. And we are gonna cook it for 15 minutes. Oh my gosh, guys. It smells a little bit burnt, but it looks pretty dang good too. <laughs> I do have a little bit of burnt cheese there around the bottom. I knew that was gonna happen. That was unavoidable. I'm gonna let it sit here just a few minutes. I was still holding out hope here. I mean, it doesn't look that bad to me. It looked pretty good until you picked it up and you seen the underside of it, and that was pretty bad. Okay, friends, we're gonna stop right here for just a second. Number one, we ate some of this pizza that was kind of burnt, and it still tasted pretty darn good, but I felt like I didn't really do this justice. So I remade this recipe and I changed very few things, just a little bit of temperature and cooking time. I wanna share those results with you now too. Second time around, I used the same kind of pizza dough, but I did stretch it out even further so that I could go up the sides of my skillet a little bit. Also, I didn't turn my skillet up quite as high and I mean, I just barely cooked it, just a minute. For baking this pizza, I knocked my temperature down to 450 degrees and I cooked it 10 minutes on the bottom rack. Then I pulled it up to the top rack and cooked it about two more minutes. You'll see here, I did run out of pepperoni, so I didn't have any extras to put on the top. There's your sneak peek. This one was much better. And you know this cast iron keeps on cooking it, so I wanted to get it out of that skillet as quick as I could. Next time, I think I may cook it at 400 or 425 even. This one looks tons better. It's still got a little bit of brownness and crispiness on the bottom. You have the edges that got a little crispy where the cheese is, but this one looks tons better. Can't wait to cut into it. This was well worth doing again. This one blowed us away. I could not believe how delicious this was and how much it tastes like the Detroit Motor City pizzas. They're so good. It tastes just like Detroit Motor City pizzas. Y'all have to try this one. It's crazy good. We're also gonna do some smoked cream cheese to take to Cali and Ryan's for the 4th of July. But oh my goodness, look, Patrick, accidentally got a third less fat cream cheese. Just one of them. Yeah, just one of them is. Yeah, we already had some regular, but I noticed one time when I use low fat, like it melts a lot more like. Uh-oh. Yeah, low fat. I don't know. We're gonna I noticed it felt softer. Yeah, it is softer, it is. So we've never smoked the low fat kind. So here you'll see along with us, if he ever gets his other one open. It's a completely different texture. This is the regular cream cheese. Look how hard that is. This one, mm, it's already like it's been smoked. Oh, you ain't really gonna do this, you know? Well, why would you not do that? Though? Yeah, that makes it, and it probably gets your seasoning down in there a little bit further. It makes it really pretty, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Might be something for your jelly to soak into when you put your jelly on. Yeah, you gotta have something for your jelly, don't Try you? Try not to touch it. So you're going this way, then you're gonna Turn around and go the other way. What's it called? Cross hatching? Mm -hmm. All right, he's cross hatching the cream cheeses. 
This is what we used last time, and it was very good. So it was we're good. We're going to go back with this. Don't really know what's going to happen right here with this low fat cream cheese. <laughs> it may just end up being just a big blob in the middle of the pan, but we're trying it anyway. And we'll just see what happens. So basically you're coating your blocks of cream cheese. You want to get all around the sides too. You don't have to necessarily get the bottom, but you can kind of dip in this extra because it's just going to get like all caramelized. Yeah, and I don't know like as far as amount. I mean, that's, that's pretty liberal. Put that's some a more lot. On. Yeah, it's a lot. Put some it's more right there. We'll put some, sure? Yeah, put some more right there. That's a lot. We don't want to see the white. <laughs> and um, do we need to get this up? No, it's fine. Okay, this is going in the smoker for about two hours. Look at my fingers. This is going in the smoker. Two, two fifty. Two fifty in the smoker. Two fifty for about two hours. Mm -hmm. Uncovered. Yeah, for two hours. Uncovered. Just like it is. Just like it yeah, is. Just like it is. Okay, don't take it away, Dad. I have decided to take these out just because. I don't want to take a chance because this is a really good cast iron pan that she uses a lot. And I don't want this stuff to stick in there. I don't think it would get hot enough, but we're so going to be sure. Okay, smoker, 250 degrees, about two hours. Take it away. Here it is off the smoker. You can see the low fat one. It did not hold together that good. Like when you push it and it's soft and this stuff starts coming apart, that's when you know it's good to go. Um, because it's going to be really creamy on the inside. And today, we are going to use this pina colada from Jam and Jams. It is pineapple coconut. I'm going to start with about half of this jar because I'm pretty selfish with my jams. <laughs> I don't want to waste them. Well, after looking at it, I decided to go ahead with about three-fourths of the jar and we're going to stick this in the microwave for just a couple seconds. Okay, we've had to change the plans. Number one, we're big hogs. And we've already started eating on that side. Even though it's low fat, it was a test. It just, it still tastes good, didn't it? No, it's fine. I mean, it, it tastes good. Don't look, it don't look as pretty. But, but they don't eat. And this one don't look as good as they regularly do. I don't know. We're just, we're out of it today. My, smoke, my smoker wasn't working right. We changed our minds. We're going to do pina colada on one. Then we've decided to do some Christmas jam on one too. All right, I'm taking my pina colada jam and I am just pouring it right over here. We've done this before with like the jalapeno and the pepper jams that are more spicy and sweet. The pepper was bad. Really yeah, Patrick likes those. He likes the spicy and the sweet together. I liked it too. It was very good on this. But I just thought, it is summer. I wanted to try one with like a pina colada. Look at that. Bro, oh, that's good. Y'all can probably hear the thunder in the background. It's July 4th, it's getting ready to storm. But we're also having Christmas jam. This one has strawberry, craisin, mandarin orange, all the spices from Christmas. Here comes the Christmas jam. And what is so pretty about a dark red jam on top of this? is you can see all the pieces, whether it's red peppers or pineapple in here, which this is not, this is cram cranberries and craisins. It just looks so stinking pretty. Both of these were absolutely delicious. The low fat cream cheese tastes as good as the regular full fat. It had a little bit of a different, maybe gritty texture, but not bad at all. I love serving it in the cast iron. I think it makes such a pretty presentation and there wasn't one bit of this left. Everybody absolutely loved it. A very simple appetizer with a huge payoff and so many options. You can just let your mind run wild with any kind of jam or jelly you want to use on top of this. Thank you for being here again this week. I never take your time for granted. If you're looking for some crock pot meals, I just posted a video last week with four brand new ones that you won't want to miss. Don't forget to check out jamandjamstn.com to get your favorite jams and stocking up on some Christmas jam. 
before it's gone until the holidays. I appreciate you and until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.